Hello there and welcome back to my videos. In this video I want to speak about the application called SyncThing and uh, what you can use it for. It's uh, about uh, synchronized files between two uh, servers and you can choose about the, the one server will be sending the files and the second one will only receive or you can synchronize this both so if you do something like configuration in the one server then it will be the same configuration on the second server. I will show you in this video about how you can uh, install it on, on Debian 10 and uh, how you can set it up so you can remote access for the web GUI. You cannot do this as a default only if you are running it like in a desktop or something like that. But I will run it in a, in a terminal use uh, only and that's why I will show how you can do this. And uh, before we continue and I will show you how you can install this uh, same thing on Debian uh, distribution then I really hope you want to enjoy my channel to subscribe you can do it by click on the thing in the right corner below and of course I really hope you want to share and like this video if you like it, uh, this video too of course and if you have any questions please make it comments below I'll try to answer as fast as I can and of course if you have some questions please make the comments below thank you so let's starting and going for the terminal here and then we will uh, install the sync thing the first we want to do is going for the sudo, so we are logged in as a root command, and then I will say git uh, update and app install, and we don't want to ask anything, so I will just say this one. Sometimes you need uh, to install this on, on Debian, so I have uh, only the minim minimized installing. So that's why I need to install this right now. When it's finished to install, then we need to to get the same things the release key so we can uh, add the package in our repository. And then we have uh, installed the, the release key and now we need to add it for the source list. doesn't have anything here so I just try it again I have it here and then we got to add it again so let's say update and then same thing then we should install the same thing So now we have installed the same thing and we are ready to, to continue to what we're gonna do. We will uh, create a user called same thing and then we will enable the services running for this user because then we, we are sure the, the application doesn't run some kind of root access. If we're just setting this, uh, the service up now, then if some uh, bug inside the application, then um, a hacker will get the access for the full machine and we don't we don't want that so that's why we are uh, encapsulated to uh, a same thing user and that's what we're gonna do now we will uh, add the user use add and uh, we will add it with the directory home called uh, same thing and then the user will be same thing then we will if we go in one directory back, we can see it here we have same thing, and we can see everything here, it's uh, it's running well. 
we have the, the Newton base and yeah. Now we are uh, we want to enable the the service so we can say system C CTL enable and same thing and same thing oops dot service and then we want to start the service too. And you can see now we have the configuration and and now we have the sync folder if you go inside the sync folder you can see we have uh, the st folder the st folder is what the sync thing are using to to control which files inside the folder and from where we have synced the files so don't rem remove this folder uh, anyway so now we will go in for, for exit here and we'll go inside to the thing thing and uh, we will say nano oh, we're just going out and say nano thing thing configuration we can't see this user because we don't you we're not root so that's fine so nano configuration same thing and then we need the configuration XML that's fine we want to open search for 127 that's uh, what we're gonna do now it's we just remove the the 127 uh, and replace it with 000, zero, zero and we leave the port as default we save the file and go in, uh, out and what we're gonna do now it's we when we have restart the service, we allow the access from remote access to the web GUI. And so just exit here and say the sudo service and same thing and restart. Then we can uh, have the remote access. So let's try it out and go to the browse for that. So we're going up here and say 100 and uh, this one and and then we need the port number and then we are inside here and uh, the first time you're going for this uh, page it's will uh, ask about you want to sending the data and we don't want that and uh, then you get the message because we have the remote access enabled without password then we have the the, the security reason so that's why we're going for for the settings here click on the settings if this dialog is, is going away, you can click on action and then settings going for the GUI. And uh, what we're gonna do here is just saying uh, element and one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the default one. And we save it. And when you have saved it, it will be crying to log in again. So that's what we're gonna do now. Now you can see the dialog here, it's going away. And we have unshared this folder, so we don't have shared with anything. We don't have any remote devices, but right now your your system is up and running. So that's how how it's working and how simple it is to installing the string thing on Debian. Thank you so much, and hope to see you next time. But before you're leaving, I really hope you want to subscribe to this channel. You can go in on the uh, in the bottom in the right corner and click on the thing. Then you want to subscribe to my channel. And I really hope you want to share and like this video. And if you have any questions about this video, about me and about anything, then please leave a comment below and then I'll try to answer you. Thank you so much and hope to see you next time. Bye.